um, and, and there's at least two very different types of things that have been called religion in humankind's history. Um, one of them is a, a, a occurs in the waking up dimension, and one occurs in the growing up dimension. And of course, both of these are, are operating to some degree uh, in most people. Um, waking up has to do with states of consciousness. These are first person, direct experiential states of consciousness. And yet in growing up, what most developmental psychologists study aren't direct states. They're more the interpretive structures or uh, frameworks that human beings use um, when they activate intelligence in a particular line. And so these structures of consciousness are much more like, let's say, roles of grammar. Uh, anybody brought up in a particular language speaking culture ends up speaking that language fairly correctly. They put subject and verb together correctly. They use adjectives and adverbs correctly. In other words, they're following large system of rules of grammar. But if you ask them to write down those rules of grammar that they're following, almost none of them can do it. Most of them don't even really realize they're following rules of interpretation when they speak or, or think. Um, and these, these stages of, of growing up are, are very much like stages of kinds of grammar, kind of worldview grammars. Um, and so whether you're looking at Kurt Fisher's uh, sensory motor to representation, to abstraction, to systems or principles, or if you're looking at the simplified egocentric, the ethnocentric, the world-centric, the integral, these are all, a person at those stages has no idea that they're at those stages um, because you can't see these structures of consciousness by introspecting. Just like if you introspect now, you can't see the rules of grammar <clears throat> that we're both following them. So, um, and this, this goes up to even the more complex developmental models like Gebser's archaic, magic, mythic, rational, pluralistic. Um, if you look at, to use Gebser's, archaic to magic, to mythic, to rational, to pluralistic, to integral, many of the foundational texts of the world's great religions that were written during the axial period some 2,000 years ago that happened to be a general era that, that most um, especially emphasized the mythic stage of growing up. That's where a lot of humanity was at that time. That's where a lot of the uh, early productions and human uh, thought systems were driven by. And so you have something like the Old Testament where Moses parting the Red Sea and Lot's wife is turned into a pillar of salt. And uh, these are all very mythic, mythological types of frameworks. Um, Many of them can be produced by a seven-year-old child today. Um, many of the fundamentalist religious texts around the world are either magic or mythic. It, it, we actually have empirical studies on this. One of the best known is by James Fowler. And he looked at um, individuals going through their uh, religious belief development. And again, he found about six major stages of development that human beings go through when they think about an ultimate reality, or in his version, an ultimate concern. And he actually called the mythic stage the mythic literal, because that tends to be how that stage thinks. And so if you have a fundamentalist, um, even if they cognitively have gone on and they're at sort of a rational stage of, of development, their belief system, uh, particularly if they believe the Bible is the word of God, um, then it's focused on something that was actually written during a mythic literal time. <clears throat> so so they, they tend to keep their spiritual intelligence at this mythic literal level. But there's another type of religious engagement. And that comes from the waking up side of the street. And that's, again, that's something that now we're dealing with first person states of consciousness. So when you're going through the stages of waking up and you get to, let's say, what's uh, sometimes called a causal or a, a formless uh, dimension of awareness, and you have an experience of being absorbed in this vast infinite abyss that's 
um, flooded with infinite love and luminosity. Well, you know it. It's not like grammar and you don't, you're operating on it and you have no idea you are. When you have that experience of being one in universal love and bliss, <clears throat> you are directly aware of it. You're, you know exactly what's going on. So that gives a kind of spiritual experience. But that's very different than, than the simple interpretive worldview type of, ex of, of experience. And what we tend to find as we look around the world at the great religious traditions is that there really are two fundamentally different types of, of spiritual systems. And they're often actually called esoteric and exoteric. And exoteric is a simple belief that you can have, and that's usually magic or mythic, literal belief. And you learn it, you, and you pledge allegiance to it, and you say, yes, I, you know, I have the one and only God, and his or her one and only prophet, or whatever it is. Um, and that's fine. But then there's the esoteric, the hidden or inner teachers of, of, of uh, religion. And that involves a series of practices of in looking into this interior subjectivity and, <clears throat> and in a sense just resting deeper and deeper and deeper. Uh, and as that happens, you tend to go through these what are held to be more real and more real and more real states of consciousness or dimensions of existence. 